today's live video. Um, as I wait for people to join in, um, first of all, let me say thank you for all the new subscribers. Um, welcome to the channel. And also, I just recently hit 100,000. That's a huge milestone for a YouTuber. And I'm so excited about it. And um, subscribe if you're new to the channel. Um, hit the like button if you like this video. Comments, let me know what you think of the recipe. And there's so many other videos on this channel that you can watch and enjoy and improve in your cooking. I'm coming to you live from my kitchen home, uh, my kitchen at home. I usually do my YouTube videos in my studio kitchen. And in 2020, we are now in May. Uh, 2020 has been a different year for sure and today uh, we are all quarantined and I'm trying to do videos that would make your cooking experience at home better. Basically improve your cooking. Today we are going to make um, fried fish. Um, so the fried fish that I had in mind is the fish and chips, that the British kind of fish and chips. But I saw another different type of recipe that does a different way of um, frying the fish. Now the first thing you need is fresh fish uh, fillets. I'm using Nile patch but you can basically use whatever um, uh, white fish you have uh, depending on where you're watching me from. Just make sure that it's nice and clean and it's pink in color and it actually smells fresh. Um, I'll do the fish last but let's start with the the ingredients for the butter the mix the the butter that i'll dip the fish in so here i have already mixed some self-raising flour and corn flour um, corn flour is this it's this one here it's usually very white in color looks like icing sugar and um, corn flour is gluten free but for this recipe what it does it makes the um the mixture have a crispier finish now if you don't have um uh, if you don't have corn flour it's fine it's not that the recipe will not work but it just makes the difference in making the crispiness of the of the fish uh nicer now um so the mixture the the amount i have used this cup so one full cup self-raising flour and half a cup uh, which is exactly the same it was about 190 uh, grams when it was full and half a cup which was about 85 grams of corn flour so basically one full cup flour self-raising and half cup of um, the corn flour uh, and to this I'll add water so let me first of all grab some water now the amount of water it's about one cup but again, the amount is relative. It depends on the cup you're using. Uh, what I'll try and show you is how the consistency should be when you're finished. Now to this, I'll add some seasoning. So I'll add black pepper. Personally, I love black pepper. So everything I do, I always add black pepper. Um, we'll add generous amount of salt. Now, if you're watching in live right now and you've just joined in, don't worry. You can always catch this video as a recording a little bit later on, on the channel. And hit the subscribe button if you're not. So today I'm making fr crispy fried fish. I've added uh, salt and pepper to the corn flour and, um, and the, uh, the self-raising flour. Um, the other thing I'll add to it, you can, this is very optional. Um, a little bit of heat, so um, a little bit of the um, chili flakes. Now this is optional, but a small amount goes a long way in making it tastier. Um, the last thing I'll add to this uh, is bicarbonate of soda. Now if you, are, if you don't have um, self-raising flour, you can always use all-purpose flour. And for all-purpose flour, for about 190 grams of, of uh, all-purpose flour, you'll need about two teaspoons of baking powder. Um, so for, for my, my theory when it comes to um, 
all purpose flour and baking powder is 100 grams of flour, uh, one teaspoon of baking powder. So one, about 195 grams would be about two teaspoons. And then I'll also add the bicarbonate. This is also important in making the, the butter puff up and So, um, and if of course, if you're using less flour, you can use about half a teaspoon of the bicarbonate. So I have all the dry ingredients ready. Um, so what I'll do first is mix. And then to this, I'll add cold water. Now for the cold water, I'll just add half and start mixing. Again, you are making the butter, the fish butter. I'll add a little bit more. You'd rather add a little bit at a time. And when it's a little bit dry, the lamps will get finished easily. Um, and when it's at that state, add some more water. Basically, we want to get to the consistency of a thick paste, but not so thick. So what is happening this time that we are on quarantine and when we are dealing with this COVID-19 disease, um, most of us, I believe across the world, we are being told to stay at home and... Um, um, staying at home sometimes to a lot of people. For me, when it comes to my work, it's kind of easier because I can still do this kind of a video uh, and and I've done other videos from my, from my kitchen for Facebook. So it's a little bit easy. But one thing, one thing I know with my family, they are more excited because um, like what you're going to prepare right now, that's going to be our dinner. So they're eating better. And I hope these videos that I'm making and any video that I have on my channel will improve in your cooking. So um, let's keep safe. I hope you're keeping safe wherever you are. Um, and now let's go back to the butter. Now this is a nice consistency. You see it should pour without uh, breaking off. The mixture should not no, should form that ribbon so that's a good consistency and that was one cup so let me recap about the flour it's all-purpose flour it's actually self-raising flour one cup half a cup of corn flour um, salt and pepper a little bit of uh, chili flakes or you can use paprika as well um, and bicarbonate of soda, one teaspoon. And then now to this, I will add a little bit of the vinegar. Right now I'm using an apple cider vinegar. Um, should be about one uh, teaspoon. Now what will happen is that that vinegar will react to the bicarbonate of soda. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, it will react to the, one, um, the bicarbonate of soda and then this mixture now will have the aeration and it will be it will start having some bubbles I think you can see the bubbles now these bubbles is what you want to this is exactly what we want so that's the butter it's ready let's go to the fish now for the fish um, I'll show you with one piece I'll use the bigger one and this is how you trim it um, you need to trim off the belly part, which is that one. You can only you can also cook it. It's not a must that you uh, use it. You can save it and use it for another purpose, like a stew or a pan fry. Uh, or you can also cook it all. But if you want a nice shape, you can trim that part off and then fill for the bones if there are any bones, especially on this side. Just make sure that there are no bones. And then when it comes now to the fish, we are going to cut it um, into about three pieces. And it's a good idea to cut it at an angle 
So this is how I'd recommend you cut it to make it look longer like that. Like a diamond, I don't know, it's cut at an angle so it makes it look nice, especially when it will be cooked. And one more. So you have the pieces there. What I'll do, it's a good idea to always also season a little bit on both sides. And then now we have our fish ready. Now I'll grab flour, some flour that I have here. So the flour is what we'll use to drench, to first apply on the fish and then we'll place it on uh, into the um, butter. So I'll use, let me use this piece. So this is what you need to do. Um, you can also season this flour, it's fine. You can actually season it. It's always good to season every part of the, of the ingredient because if you don't season, especially this one or the fish, what will happen is that um, if you only season one thing, uh, what will happen is that the fish, will, uh, the food will be diluted because you only have salt in one of the ingredients. So it's good to apply seasoning or at least salt in each of the ingredients you're going to do, especially when you're doing deep frying. So salt is ready. So just a small mix. And then now um, take your piece of fish. And you want it to be covered fully by the flour and then shake off the excess. And then dip it in the frying butter like that now ordinarily this this is one way you can cook it you can cook it straight from this into the frying oil but what i want to show you is a different method whereby um, after shaking off the excess place it back to the flour and then back to the flour like that. Now this will be extra crispy. Again, this is optional, but for this specific recipe, this is what is required. So we shake off the excess. I'll do one more piece real quick. So that I cook two of them at the same time. Make sure that all sides are covered with the flour. And welcome to anyone that is joining in live right now. I'm making crispy fried fish. Uh, and don't worry, you'll be able to watch the full video as a recording um, after I finish the live session. So, that and then flour. So I'll wash off the excess. So fish is ready. Let's go to the frying. So this wrinkles is what you want. These are the wrinkles that you want to see. Um, the wrinkles on the, on the fish. Uh, so oil is hot. So the trick in deep frying is to, when the oil is hot, it should be at about 180 degrees Celsius, about 350 Fahrenheit. Uh, dip it in oil just a little bit like that and then release it gently. The whole idea when you do that is to have it fry slightly before you start cooking because if you just dip it inside directly what will happen it will go to the bottom and stick. So a little bit and then gently release it.
So let me wash my hands. So let me know if the, uh, if, um, the sound is okay uh, on the comment section if you can, uh, in case you have anything that you're noticing that is technically not going right, let me know. But as you can see, this is, this is what you, I wanted. The, that, that, the wrinkling of the fish. So it's gonna be crispy, 180 degrees. And the idea right now is just we are waiting for it to be golden brown. And I said earlier I'm going to be serving it with um, some french fries. I've already made them. I'll also have some coleslaw. I've already made the coleslaw on the side. Um, I have another video that I've done before on how to make uh, chips. So go to my other video to watch it on my channel. Um, so, see, this doesn't take long. should take about, depending on the size of the fish, it should take about uh, three minutes, two to three minutes deep frying. But again, if you have a thin piece of fish, not too thick, uh, and that's in fact the reason why you need to cut it at a diagonal, at an angle, is that um, it cooks faster. And when the oil is hot at 180 degrees, all you need it to wait is for it to be golden brown. And let me grab a spoon, let me sh see if you can. Sound is okay, thanks for the feedback. Um, let me, you can't hear, you can't hear. It's actually crispy right now, but I think you can see the, the crispiness of the fish and that's what we want. So you should have a bowl with um, a grease proof paper or a kitchen towel uh, you know, on, on, the, on the bottom to absorb the excess oil. And again, all you're doing is waiting for the fish to be golden brown. It's a little bit not there yet. I want it a little bit golden brown. That should be okay. I know the fish is cooked, I can tell. And also the other way you can tell fish is cooked is when it starts floating. Um, but again, even when it comes to timing, it should take about uh, three minutes on both sides. You can see, fish is ready. Can hear the crackling i think so now you're about to serve it fish is ready doesn't take long um fish uh, the chips are ready let me grab my plate so that i show you um how to do it oh. okay. Okay. so before let me first clear this side in the meantime, if you have any questions, put them on the comment section and then I'll get back to you. Um, trying to clear the area a little bit. And I also have a bonus um, recipe today. Um, I'm going to serve it with some um, chips, but I also have a plantain. Um, I'll do a quick video on how, um, I'll do a quick demonstration on how to do this. It's so simple. Uh, but let's serve, um, or let me just start with this so that while it's frying, I'll be plating up the, um, the fish and the chips. And then, but for this one, let me grab a chopping board. Let me quickly rinse my knife. So when it, you can also serve it with plantains uh, and uh, if you don't like chips or you don't have chips but I think even plantains would work for this recipe. Um, so all you need to do is peel it. 
So a plantain is like, it's, a, it's um, now here in Kenya, this is not really common to most people, but you can find it in the market. It looks like the ordinary banana, but a plantain is a plantain. There's no, it's, it's, a, it's different from the banana that we eat. So this one is ripe, nice and ripe. And all I need to do is cut it at an angle. Let me show you. We're going to slice it into even sized pieces. At an angle. The whole idea is when you're doing it, try and do it evenly so that they have um, equal cooking time. So this can be a snack. This can also be an accompaniment for your dish. And I think this is not so nice. It's a little bit hard. I'll chuck this one. I'm not so sure about it. Um, so into the deep fryer um, our oil, it's at 180. Again, so for plantain, it's just that simple. Um, so into the oil. So while that is cooking real quick, let me come and plate with the chips. So um, plate. You can have your chips on one side, depending on how much fish you like. No, let's say two pieces like that, and I'm going to serve it with some coleslaw. This is optional. Um, you can also serve it with um, um, vegetables of your choice, but if you ask me, it's better to have a salad. So coleslaw on the side, just like that. And then I'll come, I have my lemon. Cut it in half. Two options. You can squeeze like that. Then place it on the side. Let me remove the seeds. That's one option. Or you can let someone just serve it on themselves. Let's go back to the plantains real quick. So they they cook really fast. So these are ready. And that's it. Golden brown. Remember, they should not be too thick because the thicker they are, the longer it will take. Um, but one thing I love about plantains is that they, they are naturally sweet. It's just, especially when you deep fry them, that's what you want. So, um, working from home sometimes not the ideal kitchen, my ideal kitchen, but I'm making do with what I have. A little bit of... Um, Chili flakes, some salt, so this can be the substitute to the, um, to the potatoes or the chips, but if, let me bite into one, it's still a little bit hot. I love plantains, they, they are a great snack. Mm. Sweet and savory. Perfect. 
um, viewers, especially from West Africa, you know this because this is something that you love, that you have. I'm here in Kenya. If you can get a plantain, that's how simple you can do it in terms of cooking it. Um, there are so many different ways, but I just wanted to show you a quick way of making it because I had it in the house. So we'll also have this. This ones I love them tomorrow for breakfast. So even when they are cold, they are perfect. Uh, a little bit spicy, when it's a little bit spicy, it will be good. So today's video, today's recipe is done. Um, crispy fried fish served with uh, chips and a side of coleslaw. Um, the crispy um, outer coating is delicious. The salt is there. I can taste the salt in the coating. And I even taste the lemon juice that I've sprinkled on top. I hope this has been... Um, a good video for you you've learned something new um, if you're new to my channel subscribe and hit the bell button so that you're notified whenever I have a new video out and I have so many other recipes on my channel with baking and cooking so and I post I try and post a week a video every week um, and now during this time of COVID-19 uh, I'm doing live videos so I hope you've learned something until the next one goodbye